But to travel now, and Debbie is back in the Harvey Norman Lounge talking about Whanganui. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Whanganui is one of New Zealand's oldest towns. The European settlers came from England, Ireland and Scotland in 1841. So heaps of history there. So we got some really great picks for a walking tour of Whanganui. Take a look. We're starting high, a bird's eye view back over the river and the town below from the War Memorial. On a clear day, you'll see from Mount Ruapehu to Taranaki from 33 and a half metres above the entrance. The tower was constructed using marine sandstone blocks containing shell fragments estimated to be more than two million years old. The memorial was erected in memory of those who died in the First World War. Next door, another great vantage point. The 66 metre high Dury Hill Elevator was built in 1919 and is New Zealand's only public underground elevator and one of only two in the world. A 200 metre long pedestrian tunnel leads to the elevator and at the top, the panoramic views back over the Tasman Sea. Back on ground level, pay attention to the architecture. Victoria Avenue has great examples from several era, Victorian and Edwardian treasures near contemporary modern buildings. Whanganui is the riverboat capital of New Zealand, so pay a visit to the Waimari Centre. It's home to artefacts and memorabilia of the many river steamers operated by Hattrick & Co between Whanganui and Pepereke during the golden age of riverboat travel in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The 1899 built Waimari is a coal-fired paddle steamer that was relaunched in 2000 after being fully restored to her former glory. Enjoy a leisurely cruise on the river, they operate during the warmer months between October and April. Across the road from the Waimari Centre is the site of a Māori fishing pa, which later became a trading market named after the Battle of Motua Island in 1864, when Whanganui River Māori defended the town against invading warriors. Historical monuments and memorials are set amongst the mature trees of Motua Gardens. A 10-minute walk away is the centrally located Cook's Gardens, a multi-purpose stadium where Peter Snell broke the four-minute mile on a grass track in 1962 before the all-weather synthetic track was laid. The Ward Observatory is worth a visit. It has the largest unmodified refractor telescope in use in New Zealand. The Cook's Garden Bell Tower was first used as a fire watch tower and is home to Whanganui's first telephone system. Virginia Lake is on St John's Hill and offers a 25-minute woodland walk around the water. The bird life both on and off the water is a major draw card. The historic Higginbottom Fountain comes to life at night with changing colours and water displays. The adjoining Winter Gardens is a year-round attraction with colourful displays and is nearby the free-flight walk-through bird aviary with more than 30 species of birds numbering around 400. The Riverside Kofi Park has entertained and delighted children since it opened in 1959. Ride a brontosaurus or peer inside a whale, maybe climb to the summit of a mountain. There's certainly plenty to see on your walking tour of Whanganui. Oh, some really great ideas there. What an amazing looking place. And you're back on the couch next week uh, exploring an offshore island. Yeah, we just got back from Great Barrier Island. So we went on a really cool trike tour, really great way to see the island. We walked through native bush and went to a natural hot spring on Great Barrier. Oh, nice. Stayed at the luxurious Trillium Lodge and the Dark Sky Experience because, of course, it's a dark sky sanctuary now. So we went and spent a night with the ladies from Good Heaven. So I'll tell you all about it next week. Wow, that sounds fascinating. Looking forward to that. I thank you very much, Debbie.